Welcome to Interceptor Beyond podcast. My name is Arthur, and today, as you already read in the titles, we have off. I talked to Keith and Dimitri. They're super nice and fun people. Recorded at Arena in Vienna, Austria, backstage in the green room. As usual, before we dive into our conversation, I'd like to remind you about our upcoming show, The Interceptor Beyond Show, which takes place once a month at Arena Basel. And the next show is on September 9th, 9-9. It is a late night talk show recorded in front of the live audience. A conversation with music industry pros, we have trivia games, we have prizes for our audience, and we also have music after the show. There are episodes online on YouTube and Spotify, so watch it. Be there on September 9th. That's 99, yeah, yeah, 99, number 9, number 9, number 9. Be there. Don't forget to follow our podcast on any platform of your choice. Leave a rating and follow the podcast on Instagram at Interceptor Beyond. All right, let's talk to Keith and Dimitri. Hello, everyone. My name is Dimitri, and I am the guitarist in the band Off. I'm Keith Morris. I'm the vocalist. Nice. Guys, nice to meet you. How the tour is going so far? You, you had one gig yesterday so far. Yes, we, uh, we played in Poland at a festival called Off Festival. It was nice of them to name the festival after us. It's always been a personal dream of mine to play Poland because uh, my mother was born and raised in Warszawa, so I got to cross one off the bucket list. Oh, I didn't know. I mean, there's not much info regarding that online, so I didn't know, for example. That your mother. I'm revealing it here first. Exclusive, as usual. Yes. How was it for you? Well, tonight is the second night, and I've both of us have been here before. Dimitri came along when Flag played um, right across the way in the, I guess the one of the smaller the room that holds like 200 people, and the weather was great. The everybody had a great time. And I expect the same thing tonight. The only thing is just the weather is a little bit down. Yeah, but the thing is, is once you get a bunch of people in the room, the room warms up. Plus, you play such music that, I mean, you, it's hard not to warm up. I want to talk about, but wait, uh, but how was yesterday? You didn't answer the question. How was yesterday? The site was beautiful. The food was really good. And... Um, they need to bump up the, their, the way they treat bands. We got through playing and they said, scram, like just go hang out. And I said, hey, you know, uh, I think it's pretty cool that you're off festival and we're off and I would love a medium t-shirt. And they handed me a map and said, well, here's where you can go buy one. Oh, a little bit. Okay. I mean, I mean, but... The kids in the crowd were going crazy. They were smashing into each other and jumping up and down. So the show was fun. And that's really all we care about. You know? yeah, I saw some, uh, some social media posts yesterday, from yesterday. It was amazing. I hope it's going to be like at least like this today. And It's not. Don't, don't, don't expect what we did yesterday to happen tonight. Not going to happen. It's going to be greater. We're going to uh, turn the volume down. We are going to ask that there's no lights on stage. And we're all going to stand around with, uh, they're all going to stand around with their cell phones flashing in their faces. I don't have a cell phone, so I don't get to do that. So you're going to play an acoustic set? Yes. Yes, I love acoustic music. It's all I listen to. And maybe some disco music, acoustic version. No. Keith, I know you like disco music. But I'm, no, I'm being, I don't. I'm being very serious about acoustic music. Right. I mean, it's pretty much all I listen to these days. I'm, yeah, like what? Um, I really like uh, Sun Kill Moon. I have been listening to uh, a lot of weird kind of downer, loner, outsider folk kind of people like Bob Desper, um, Sybil, Sybil Bayer. You know, stuff that's in the realm of Neil Young, Elliot Smith, Nick Drake, that sort of thing. I really, really like singer-songwriters who can finger-pick and have skills on an acoustic guitar. That speaks to me more than anything else right now. Uh-huh. All right. Yeah, like, so you know, like... like acoustic, I thought acoustic plus vocals, uh, but you mean like, uh, like instrumental? Well, music? I can... No, no, I, I mean people who... Like, to me, nothing is more impressive than 
someone who can walk on a stage with an acoustic guitar and play their songs, you know? In, I, quiet, in quietness. Yeah, I prefer if there's vocals, but I can also listen to John Fahey all day or Robbie Basho, but he does sing. To me, it's the equivalent of like stand-up comedy, you know? Being Speaking of comedy, when, when it comes to the acoustic guitar, there, there was a certain point uh, in my life where there's a scene in Animal House where the guy is playing acoustic guitar and <laughs> John Belushi comes down the stairs, grabs the acoustic guitar from him. He wanted to bash it over the guy's head, but he was a little bit more considerate than that. He just smashed it on the stairs. So something like that happened to you? Um, no, it could, or um, somebody might need to um, create a fire in their fireplace or a, a campfire and they need more wood for the fire. Which brand of the guitars is the best for the fire? Um, <laughs> the most expensive one, whatever the most expensive acoustic guitar is. Dimitri, we need your input on the guitars that burn the best. The last gift that Keith gave me was a Roy Harper record. Yeah, so he's encouraging me uh, along that path. And you also gave me a live Neil Young solo acoustic record. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Um, Was that from the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion? No, you gave me Young Shakespeare. Okay. Which was, uh, I don't know where that was, but... Um, well, he's, he's releasing all of his live records now. It's so, it's so great to be a Neil Young fan right now. It's like every few months he's... He's throwing down something from the vaults. And, and he lot just played of those shows in L.A. He played, what, like seven or eight shows? Yeah, but the reason I didn't go is because he was only playing live material, songs he'd never played before, which means no hits whatsoever. Didn't and that's he, fine. I think he, I, yeah, I think he but I'm not, played I, 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 I don't, a, I'm not gonna, a couple to just please the crowd. I don't know. I don't think so. And the ticket prices were high, so, you know. How high? I mean, I don't know what's... Oh, what's hundreds going. of dollars. Okay. In, the high, in the high hundreds. Like Taylor Swift. Like $101. <laughs> we were on tour in the States uh, a couple months ago, and we went through Nashville, and Taylor Swift was playing the big, giant Megadome, <coughs> and our hotel rooms were so expensive because everybody had descended upon the city. And even though we made reservations in advance... It was outrageous. The, the hotel rooms were 10 times the price. I think we need to start, because she's coming here, I think. Do you know? Do you know? Do you, do you, do you, <laughs> we're not going to play over there on the roof of the Ibis Hotel. If she does, uh, I will respect you for... Oh, no, 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 I will not. No, 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 no. We should start making bootleg t-shirts to sell it, because she's coming here. We need to, like, get some cash. You know what? She just tipped all of the truck drivers that are driving all of her, all of the parts to the show, the lights and all of the gear that the band plays and the staging. There were 15 trucks and she paid each truck driver. She gave them a hundred thousand dollar tip. Interesting. It's not That's to have the kind of Is money it? she's making on her tour. Well, yeah, definitely. It's Taylor Swift, but if she doesn't want to get in trouble with the union of the truck drivers, she because was, if if it goes south, the whole tour is out. She was selling anywhere between eight and twelve million dollars worth of merchandise to all those screaming girls every night. There were a few screaming boys in the crowd too. Yeah. I know that here it went like crazy when the sales go up. Uh, I mean, the ticket sales and everybody was trying to buy tickets and it's like 300 euros, 400 euros. I don't know, something crazy. That's, you know, like, that's no, way more than that. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. I'm not a, I mean, respect as a, whatever, as a icon of a pop icon, maybe, but I don't listen to the music. But okay. I want to ask actually uh, the real reason, one of the reasons why I want to talk to you, I want to talk to you about the movie. The movie that you directed, Dimitri, right? So what's the status on the movie right now? It is very close to completion. We premiered the film at Slamdance earlier this year, which was a big honor. But when they asked us, we, we panicked because we weren't, we weren't done. Yeah. And so we put together a special cut uh, because we, wanted, we, were at, we were asked to close the festival. We wanted to do that. 
since then we've been you know fine-tuning the sound design finishing vfx it's a it's a much better movie now than when we showed it in park city it's almost time to find a home for the film and it's actually a, a, a really good time for us to be doing that because hollywood is pretty much shut down there's all these strikes happening i don't know if you heard about it of course but um you know there's very uh very few projects that are yeah, the content not there it's not there so we're gonna have uh, a highly entertaining um feature film sci-fi comedy with with jack black in it yeah i mean you probably need to and tell David a little bit from the jesus lizard and don bowles from the germs and one of my really good friends dh pelegro who is no longer with us davy havoc um chloe dixtra christy from the flesh eaters james duval from donnie darko and uh, tell uh, us the plot of the movie like this uh, well, what's the story about it's 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 about a lot of things it's about uh it's it's a it's a love story that that uh uh you know it's keith's journey with this with this other woman but it's really i would say the the backbone is, is, of the story is uh, is about uh the band existing between two different dimensions one where we are in the band off and another one where we don't know each other at all and we're very very different people you know life threw us a curveball in that reality we we didn't follow our dreams and we're um very very different people and a situation arises where keith realizes it's very Im Im important uh for the uh advancement of human consciousness to find the other members of off in this reality where we don't know each other and convince us that we have to travel to this other dimension with the with the aid of this this uh drug that he's discovered because we have to uh fight these um this evil uh have, AI AI species we have to save humanity you know you gave so many details that are not online so I'm like yeah give me more details regarding <laughs> regarding the movie but yeah i mean it was uh, you did it uh, for a long time and it was in development so right now you're in the distribution phase right like you're trying to find a distri i mean at the moment you're finishing the movie but you're looking for a distribu distributor at the moment yeah i mean you know we're going to we'll talk to everybody we'll talk to the you know the streamers we'll talk to uh um... do you know who is jeff everett yes No, who's that? On YouTube there is a channel it's called Film Courage. Cor mm -hmm. Film Courage. Jeff Everett. He discusses he he is from the distribution part of the from the distribution part of the filmmaking and he tells about oh the all the bad stuff that's going on with with distribution. Basically, wh why I'm asking uh, telling you this is like if you don't don't know how the distribution in the movie business works, you should check out that uh, video. At least you will know what's going on, just what what to look out for, you know, like because right now you're in in the distribution phase. Super important that you don't get screwed over, you know, by the distributors because they can s put your movie in a package, sell it, and don't give you any percentage or anything. For yeah. example, well, you know? you know, we made sure to surround ourselves with uh, people who are veterans in the business, yeah. and uh, we're just more on the creative side, yeah. you know, so. Uh, I feel pretty good about the stuff that's happening uh behind the curtain and there's a lot of interest in the movie. We just need to figure out, you know, what the where the best play the the best place uh for this film is because we just want as much we want as many people to see it as possible. Why why I'm so passionate about this because what you did, like you made a movie with a band and it's a movie, right? Because I had this idea half a year ago that I want to do, I want, I want, I want to be a filmmaker. I want to make movies, oh, right? Nice. Right. So I thought like half a year ago, hey, I, sh I should make a set of short movies. Short movies, nobody cares about short movies, right? So I will do a movie like super low budget with a band, like for the band, right? Mm -hmm. And then I found out that you did this. I was like, good, because you're an example that I can show to people that it's possible. But probably your budget is above what I'm thinking. So it's like more than 10 grand up the oh, budget for the movie, right? Because yeah. you got finances from the studio, uh, from the label, right? Yeah, yeah. But still, that's why I'm so passionate about that your project works out, you know? Well, we had made all these um, 
pretty silly music videos um, that became more and more elaborate as as we uh, you know went from album to album, and uh, there was really nowhere left to go except a, a feature film, and um, you know it took it took many years to figure out how to do it. This album and this film were always thought of together as a as like a concept project, and we wanted to you know be a part of that short list of movies and albums that are uh, joined at the hip beatles uh hard day's night help frank zappa 200 motels monkey's head tom pink floyd tom, live at um pompeii pink floyd the <laughs> pink floyd the wall you know uh the who tommy quadrophenia um we we really didn't want to just uh, you know be a band that has a documentary or you know, and there's a there's a lot of that stuff, but we really wanted to uh, to have a, a a narrative and and do something that was um, really bold and and challenging and fun and something that would take us creatively out of this uh, box that we were in for the first three records. And the latest album is the soundtrack to to the movie. Yeah. Like so, the 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 album is uh, and the movie are like tied in together. It's yeah, one I mean thing. the the movie really explains why the album is so important to make uh, you know for the band yeah there's a lot of uh there's a lot of back and forth you know the album points to the film and vice versa what was the hardest part of making this movie so far it's always just raising the money <laughs> yeah that's it's usual it's all that's that's by far the hardest part and probably in la it's even more expensive than anywhere else yeah but there's a lot of resources in la and there are a lot of a lot of people who live there, you know, a lot of, uh, let's, let's say, you know, famous friends who are willing to do us favors. And since we're in LA, they're in LA. And so you can, uh, you can put together a, a, a pretty amazing cast, you know, like Dana Gould's in uh, our, our film. Yeah, it's something we're really proud of. It, it really, nobody expected it to turn out this good. It is a legitimate movie that can stand on its own apart from the album and you know, it was always designed to bring more attention to the band. You know, maybe people will see this and not even realize, oh my God, like this is a, this, this is an album I can go buy. This is a band that I can go see. This, this really exists, you know? So that's our hope is that uh, it'll, it'll bring us a bigger audience. And that's what was my idea also, because this is like a, it's, you can, and you can only make not only one movie. It's not, it's only the beginning. If everything works out, I'm pretty sure you can do more movies. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's definitely my plan because, uh, you know, my knee really hurts. I, I stubbed my toe this morning, so I'm, I have two different limps right now when I walk. It's called shuffle. Yeah, but uh, no, I mean, like, you know what I mean? I, I, I love doing, I, I love playing loud, uh, you know, rock music and all that, but it would be nice to... Uh, to try other things and uh i used to be very serious about acting when i was when i was younger you know i studied um i went to theater school and uh i saw you in the movie suck man and i and yeah. then i realized it when i saw the imdb i was like yeah that's how i know your yeah. face of course i know you're from the band but i couldn't connect the two yeah, so you know i i was really I, at one point i thought I, I thought i wanted to have a life in the theater and um you know, so this, you know, making films really brings everything full circle. And if and if uh, if I can just get everybody their their money back, then I I should have another opportunity to make to make a, a second film. You know, and I know Keith has things that he's working on with other people as well um, that are in that world. So what's the plan now for the off? Okay, you're touring. You have four more shows. What's 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 going on then? Well, we have five more shows. Five You're more. counting tonight before we've even played. You're going to kill it, I know. Um, we have more shows coming up. And as Dimitri stated, we um, have a movie that's basically an advertisement for our record, just like our record is an advertisement for the movie. We have a bunch more shows to play playing festivals coming over here we're we're actually going to be back over here what in about a month and a half is, or is it sooner we we come back to play the festivals 
string of shows in the UK and oh yeah no uh, I think it's not announced yet November it's announced yeah we're doing the UK and Ireland and then um, uh, we're doing Primavera Weekender in Spain and then we go directly from Spain to Mexico City to play uh, Corona Capital which is the biggest festival in Mexico and then we're doing all three Primavera festivals in South America so um, Argentina uh, Brazil and Colombia. So that's going to be a really long run. So at the moment you're focused on two things, touring and the movie, I that's guess. It. Yeah. Are you planning to write new music or, or, or it's the way after the movie? We're, We're in no hurry. Yeah, I mean, it took, it took us eight years to release, uh, you know, this new record. We, it's been, it's been quite, quite a journey and there were a lot of, you know, this is my advice to, to other people who are trying to make, uh, films is to just not give up because you're going to get a lot of uh, doors slammed in your face. There are going to be times where you're, you know, over and over again, you're going to think, okay, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. I guess it's not going to happen. That was the feeling for six years. It, there, you know, there was this one window we had last year where we could film and it was getting closer and closer. And, uh, it was looking once again like it wasn't going to happen. And I was thinking, okay, well, fuck it. We'll just pivot and make music videos. And I guess we won't, we won't make the film. And like, I remember calling Keith up and him just saying like, okay, well, I guess we'll have some egg on our face, you know, cause we've been talking about, we're gonna make a movie, but hey, it is what it is. And then suddenly this big chunk of money that we were hoping for came in and it was like, let's go. And we barely had any time to do pre-production. It was just scrambling and shooting on the fly. We did this very much in like a punk rock style. That's why everyone's so amazed at how sophisticated it turned out, you know? Uh, because well, it looks good from what, from, from the bits of pieces that you can see in, the, in, in that's things. Not even, that's not even the, the coloring that we ended up with. That was just, we had to have music videos. The film wasn't even done. And we were just taking footage and backing them into music videos just so we had something to, to promote. Because we didn't have any, any more time or any more money to, uh, to make standalone music videos for those songs. And it's good that we did that um, because people can, first of all, look back and say like, oh, like, look at how they started out and look at where the film ended up. It'll be interesting to, to see the process. But, uh, but also it, it brought anticipation, to, it, 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 uh, it brought awareness and, and um, anticipation that there's a film coming because people could actually see it, you know, like, holy shit, they, they, they filmed it, you know? <laughs> That's why it's exciting. I mean, you can see the process and the whole story, how it was created. Everything works to, like together. It all comes together. I hope everything works out. Cross fingers. Well, it's all, it's already worked out. I mean, the film, it's you just need to finish it a little bit and then it's, it's done. I'm there. I'm waiting on just three VFX shots. I have one more day of sound, one more day of color, and we're done. I mean, it's really, really like we're like the che I can see the checkered flag. We're about to cross the finish line, and it is something that is, uh, you know, I think. People are not going to be expecting this from from a band, you know, that we did this. It's uh, it's the real deal. I mean, I'm, you know, it's not Citizen Kane or anything like that, but it's a proper um, fun uh, midnight movie that hits on a lot of different levels. You know, you feel a lot of different things. There's some moving moments. It's super goofy. It's kind of has some legit sci-fi at times. It's a little bit scary. There's horror elements, you know. It's, um, you know, we put a lot into it. So we can expect the movie probably end of the year or early beginning. I would of the say next. early next year. Early next yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. so also with the yeah. time and yeah. then distribution, promotion stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, so cool. That's really cool. And we really hope that, uh, that the movie, um, and it should, carry the same weight that the, the record carries because the album was uh, extremely well received in terms of uh, people 
you know, applauding our, our creative efforts to try something really, really different. The record is awesome. I like the record, like a Thank lot. You. Like as a, as a music piece, plus as a concept piece, plus all the lyrics. I mean, you went completely different way that you usually do. And that was, I guess, the task and you accomplished it. So I really like the record. Well, thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, the, the movie was, was really important to the shaping of, of how that album turned out because um, we thought of it as a soundtrack. And by thinking of it as a, a soundtrack to us, to this weird sci-fi film that, that we were making, it uh, completely opened us up creatively and got us to think about how to approach Uh, songwriting and, and production in a different way. All right, guys, I don't want to bother you too much. You need to prepare for the show. Uh, in the end, what, so what off song should I put in the end of the interview? A good introduction to off band. War Above Los Angeles. I was going to say the same thing. I said that because I knew he was going to say that. <laughs> That's his, the, that chorus is his, he, he, seems to think that's the best chorus that we've written. Yeah. Uh, what punk rock fan wouldn't want to hear Keith Morris scream, war above Los Angeles? I mean, come on, that's classic. Yeah.